Okay, so first things first, whenever I opened up this Anycubic Photon, the first thing I noticed was that there's almost nothing on this circuit board compared to my older Anycubic Photon. In this video, I'm gonna explain a little bit of why that is, as well as show you how to quickly and easily replace the LCD screen on this wonderful machine. The first step in the process of replacing the LCD screen for this is to remove six screws. There's gonna be one, two on this side, and we're gonna use an Allen key or the screwdriver that came with the printer, and you're just gonna go ahead and remove these. These screws are fairly recessed, so you wanna be careful whenever you're removing them, so that way you don't lose them inside the machine. We're gonna remove these two. You wanna make sure that the power is also off. And then inside, there's two more screws that you have to remove. After that, you're pretty much clear to remove the bottom of the machine and access the circuit board. But I usually like prying up the screen first. These will be held on by either glue or double-sided adhesive. And you just wanna basically be very careful when going around this and carefully lift it up. You might have to go all the way around. This one's been removed a couple times, so it's pretty easy to pop up. Once you have it up, you're gonna go ahead and put this on something to where you can prop up the back of the machine whenever you pop it open like a clamshell. I am gonna use this Ikea book holder, which 100% would not recommend. It wasn't stable enough for what I was wanting it for, but you're gonna want something to where you can prop this back to a point where you won't risk severing the ribbon cable that's connecting the front panel to the circuit board. And here is the ribbon cable that we're gonna to wanna to replace. This is for the screen. This is what it looks like on the older model Anycubic Photon. Now, as I stated in the beginning of the video, one thing you'll notice is that there's a lot more going on on this older circuit board. This newer model seems to have some improved hardware as well as the software that's running on it, but the ribbon cable is also a lot easier to get at and replace. So I'm just gonna use a pair of small tweezers to pop this off and carefully remove the screen by sliding it out. Uh, the screen's garbage, so I don't really care what happens to it, but you don't want to damage anything on its way out. So the screen I'm gonna replace it with is this one that I got on Amazon. It's worked great for me in the past. I'll have a link for it down in the description, but I'm gonna go ahead and put some gloves on so that way I don't smudge anything. And here's the screen. You'll notice that it is a straight connector. There is an adapter that you'll have to use for this. This is the adapter that makes it work on the Anycubic and you just wanna make sure you put it on the right direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at the previous screen and I see that it needs to point to the right. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and get this adapter snapped on. It can be a little bit fiddly to get on, so it takes me a little bit, but you'll, you should hear a solid snap whenever you get it in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab an alcohol wipe to clean this glass underneath the screen real quick. And then I'm gonna take this screen and remove the protective cover that is on the bottom of the screen. And then I wanna quickly put it on the machine so that way it doesn't collect any more dust than it already will. And you wanna be careful whenever you're sliding this ribbon cable in that you're actually getting it on the correct side of the circuit board. I tend to use tweezers to help out in this. Go ahead and smooth it down to get it to adhere to the glue or double-sided tape they're using. I've used some really nice tape in the past for reattaching this, and I'll go ahead and have it in the description below. With my big fingers, it can take a little bit to get this to snap into place, but just like the adapter, you should feel that snap. I applied some electrical tape. You can also use double-sided tape, which is what was originally on there. One viewer discretion advice comment I will say is that electrical tape can leave residue over the long term, so be careful with that. But now that we've got it in, we just want to be careful of the ribbon cable and close the clamshell back up. 
And the last thing I wanna do before screwing all the screws back in is I wanna test it and make sure that the screen is actually secured, snapped in place, and is working correctly. I haven't had any issues with these screens, but one of the screens I got from AnyCubic was actually defective. So I always check them to make sure that they're working. We can just go into the settings and make sure that the UV blocking works correctly. Run a couple more tests and I can see that it's working fine. So I'll go ahead and remove the protective cover and we're good to go. So that's how you replace the screen on an Acubic Photon. If this video helped you out or you learned something, please give us a like, subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Also, if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to see in future videos, make sure to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.